Good morning. Thanks for hopping on. I want to give you a few brief nuggets just to help jumpstart your day. I'm so glad that you are here. Come on in the room. Take your shoes off. Get comfortable. You know how I like to do it. There's some milk, coffee, cappuccino, eggs, bacon, donuts, all that good stuff is over in the next room. Walk on over, grab yourself a plate, get yourself something to drink, and I'll be right here waiting for you. This is a thankful Tuesday. Yes, it is. We have every reason to be thankful. This is the day that the Lord has made. We want to rejoice and be glad in it. Listen, I know, I know you love your spouse, you love your children, you love your co-workers, you love your neighbors, you love the CEO, you love the COO, you love the district manager, the floor manager, you love all those people who have titles. And there's nothing wrong with that. There is nothing wrong with that at all. But you know what? They don't have the power to make a day. Only God can make a Tuesday. Only God can do that. He's God all by himself. He does not need our help. So go ahead and take your hands off the wheel this morning and let him have it. Let him have it. He can handle those things today that you're going to find a challenge. They laughed at your crucifixion. I want to know what are they going to do about your resurrection because you are going to get back up again. Oh, yes, you are. You are not going to stay in that spot always. I'm grateful this morning. Grateful for the train that didn't derail, the boat that didn't sink, and the plane that did not crash. When you and I were asleep last night, dead to this world, didn't know what was going on, God sent an angel. Oh, yes, he did. He said, go by her bed and wake her up. She's on an assignment. So you're here this morning, not by accident. You're here because God has purposed you to be here. He has an assignment for you. I appreciate you being here. We are live and in color. If this is your first time, please don't let it be your last time. And if you happen to stop by later during the day, just type in replay in the comment bar. and That'll let me know that you were here. I want to thank you for liking sharing and commenting. I do go back throughout the day and read all of your comments. You encourage me as I hope I encourage you. Iron sharpens iron. Oh yes it does. I want you to keep asking, knocking and seeking. God does not get tired of you. You are his child. You are his daughter. You are his son. He does not get tired of you. If you get any bad news, any bad news today whatsoever, I want you to click return to sender. Send it back where it came from. We're not having it. We're not going to have it today. Send all bad news back to where it came from. Perhaps today is trash day in your neighborhood. Make sure you put the bad news in the trash can and let them haul it off and take it away. I want you to thank him for the victories, both great and small. I don't care what they are. They're yours. They're yours. Oh, yes, they are. Take ownership of that. You didn't get a chance to finish high school, but God has provided a way for you to go back and get your GED, get your associates, get your bachelor's, get your master's, get your Ph.D. Honey, we're proud of you. We're proud of you in advance. Yes, and it's not taking too long. You are right on schedule. You are right where God wants you to be. Yeah, perhaps you su suffered some losses in this season. You have, Maybe you lost somebody you love, lost a mother, lost a father, lost a child, lost a best friend, lost a favorite aunt or uncle, lost a cousin, lost a neighbor. I mean, just lost. I want you to know this morning that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. You go ahead and go through your stages of grief. We're not in a hurry. You're not heavy. You're our sister. You're our brother. We're there for you. You take all the time that you need. Yeah. And we thank God for the precious memories that are left behind. Loss is never easy, so we don't make light of that. Maybe you lost a car, lost a house, lost something uh, that was important to you. That, that is materialistic, but that was important to you. We're asking God to restore, to restore everything that was taken away from you. We know that he can do that. We know that he can do that. I want to ask God to do what I always ask him to do on every call. To help somebody, heal somebody, deliver somebody, restore somebody, reposition somebody, change somebody's mind, turn somebody's life around, give somebody another chance. Sometimes that's all we need. That's all we need is God to step in and to give us another chance. Somebody, somebody on this call, you may be on the verge of a nervous breakdown. 
And I want to ask God this morning, instead of a breakdown to give you a breakthrough, I want to ask him to come through for you like he's never come through for you before. I want you to keep on pressing. Yes, indeed. There's a blessing in pressing. Just don't give up. Keep on pressing. I know it gets difficult. I know that life is challenging. I know that perhaps you've made some mistakes and some missteps. I know that the valley gets dark. Yeah, but I want you to know that there's light at the end of the tunnel. I want you to tie a knot and hold on. Just don't give up. Don't give up. And you, those of you who are on the call this morning, God has positioned you. You're going to come across somebody today that feels like giving up. I pray. I pray that you will give them some of your strength. Give them some of your strength so that they won't give up. Jennifer Catchins is here. She says, good morning, beautiful people. Chris Carnett says, good morning, my sisters. Elaine Powell Snell says, uh, good blessed Tuesday. Giovanna says, good morning. Missy Brown says, good morning. Robin Taylor says, uh, good morning. Uh, been missing you. <laughs> Marjorie Malone says, good morning. Sister Ira Booker, First Lady of the Shelbyville Church of Christ, says, good Tuesday morning. I'm so glad all of you are here. Yesterday, we talked about the Lord being our shepherd. Yeah. And, and how we how we take that for granted. That is a powerful position. That God is our shepherd. Yeah. A, a shepherd looks out for his sheep. You know. Takes care of his sheep. That's pretty powerful. And I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful that the President of the United States is not my shepherd. Yeah. A diplomat. A senator. Uh, uh, a state representative. A city council person, a CEO of a company. I'm so glad, a, 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 a principal. I'm, I'm so glad that those people are not my shepherd. The Bible is very clear. The Lord is my shepherd. Yeah. Aren't you glad about that? That's a shouting moment this morning. I hope, I hope you're glad this morning that he is your shepherd. Uh, Allison Barrow. Traverso says, good morning, family. So glad to have you, Allison. So glad you're here. Not sure if this is your first time, but if it is, please don't let it be your last time. We're so, so glad, Allison, that you're here. Giovanna Russell says, please lift my mother, Sister Priscilla Norfleet, in prayer. I had to take her back to the emergency room yesterday, and she has been admitted with pneumonia and small blood clots. God, God, you can do anything. You can do anything. You are the almighty physician. You have heard Giovanna's prayer. I'm asking all of you to pray uh, for Giovanna's mother, Sister Priscilla Norfleet. You've heard Giovanna's request. Well, there are two or three gathered together in his name. He is in the midst. Yeah. So we're praying, Giovanna, for your mother's complete healing. Uh, we know that uh, she has skilled nurses and doctors, physicians, and uh, we ask them to, uh, to help her uh, to recover and to heal in Jesus' name. Sister Ira Booker says, uh, I love your, it skipped. She says, I love your studio. <laughs> you are looking marvelous. Thank you so much. I had to take everything out of here. I'm painting. Yeah, I'm painting and making some changes. So uh, you're just seeing the uh, in-between. I just needed to get to some hard places. So that's what you see behind me. Um, Missy says, yes, Lord. Uh, Missy's praying. Missy Brown praying for Sister Priscilla Norfleet and family. Sister Ira, my heart is praying for my sweet sister Priscilla Norfleet. Yes, indeed. Um, Allison says, Amen. We'll lift her up in prayer. Marjorie says, Praying for your mom. She was on my call list today. Jennifer Katcher says, Praying for Giovanna's mom. Yes, indeed. We're all praying. Thank you all for your prayers. The Lord is my shepherd. And then we went to a second part, which says, I shall not want. Now, that's a powerful position to be in. Yeah. Because this world leaves us wanting so much. 
It's designed that way. Advertisers, advertisers are always trying to get us to buy something, to sell something, to buy into something, uh, to make us feel like our house is not big enough, our car is not nice enough, we need a, a new clothes, a new hat, a new pair of earrings, uh, shoes with re red bottoms, we need a new Prada bag, we're always needing something according to advertisers, but how many of us can say, I shall not want there is nothing I want because I have everything I need. That is a powerful position to be in. The Lord is my shepherd. Yeah. I wouldn't want anybody else for a shepherd and I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Yeah. I don't have to lie down in brown grass or scorched grass grass that has been burnt up. I don't have to lie down where there is no grass. I don't have to lie down where turf has been laid to try to fool somebody like there is grass. The word says he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Yeah. That alone sounds so comforting. Yeah. And green pastures was associated with prosperity and wealth back in the day. Something plush. So the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in not just any type of pasture. I get to lie down in green pastures. And we stopped yesterday on this one. He restoreth my soul. How many of you this morning need your soul restored? I know I do. His mercies are new every morning, every day. I'm needing my soul to be restored. I shared with you yesterday, the only reason we're able to survive grief, the only reason we don't lose our minds, the only reason we're able to stop crying when a loved one passes away, the only reason we're able to wake up and keep putting one foot in front of the other is because he restores our soul. Yes. Yes, indeed. Every day he restores our soul. We got some new comments. Let me go ahead and um, acknowledge them. Anita Mark, my sister, says good morning. Good morning to you, Anita. So glad you're here. Chris Cornett says welcome, Allison, and prayers for Giovanna's mother. Um, continue. Um, continue prayers for Joanna's mother. Thank you so much for that. Um, and she said, pray for Rose Haywood. She is recovering. Let's make sure we say a prayer also for Rose Hayward. We want to definitely try, uh, Giovanna, if you can privately leave me a message of where we can send something to your mom. We would love to do that. Yes, we would love to do that. Uh, Sister Ira, uh, I read that already. Let me go back. Elaine Powell says, Amen. Ethel Barnett says, praying for Priscilla. Yvette Marie Fuller says, good morning. Please pray for me feeling ill. Would you all please pray? Please pray for my Southwestern Christian College former roommate and colleague, Yvette Fuller, uh, not feeling well. So we want to ask God to restore her, uh, restore her health. And we pray, Yvette, that you feel, uh, feel better. I'll, keep, I'll call out your name and keep you in my prayers. Uh, Missy Brown says, I do. Elaine says, restore my soul, Lord. Uh, Anita Mark says, I'll be praying for Giovanna Russell's mom. Marjorie Malone says, he restored my soul. Ethel says, woke up late, prayed myself to sleep, was in pain last night. Would you all pray for Ethel Barnett? Whatever that pain is, we know that God is a healer. And we're going to trust him. Yeah, to deliver you from that pain. We're asking him to take it away that he it does not come back. Jennifer A. Catchins is praying for Rose. Oh, so many, so many need prayer this morning. Make sure you go out uh, throughout the day and call out these names and pray for everybody who's asking for prayer. The next part of that is what I love so much. After he restoreth my soul, my cup runneth over. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> My cup runneth over. That's a powerful position to be in also. 
My cup runs over so that anything around me, any, anybody who touches me, yeah, they get to have a part of that overflow. They get to have some of the anointing because I have too much. My cup is running over. Now, if my cup didn't run over, and I only had just enough for me, then I wouldn't be able to share with anybody else. But God is so good. Tammy, I see you. She just chimed in. Tammy Everett says, good morning. So glad to have you, Tammy. If this is your first time, please don't let it be your last time. We're glad you're here. We are glad you're here. My cup runneth over. Yeah. So God doesn't just give me enough for me. Not only is he my shepherd, he's a good shepherd. Not only does he place me in a position where I don't have to want for anything. He has provided all of my needs according to his riches in glory. I don't just get to lay down anywhere. He causes me to lie down in green pastures. He restores my soul. He knows that I need restoring every day. Every day, not some days, not once a week, not once a month, not once a year. I need restoring every day. And then he allows for my cup to run over. Yeah. I'm so glad that he doesn't give me Sophia. I see you. You just chimed in. Yvette isn't feeling well. So let's make sure, Sophia, we call out Yvette's name and pray for Yvette. Sophia is my Southwestern Christian College colleague, too. Yes, indeed. So glad you're here. She says, good morning. Sophia, we're praying for your father, too. I have not forgotten. Giovanna says, Sister Tammy Yvette. Uh, Everett, thanks for tuning in with us, sis. We're so glad you're here. Ethel says, praying for Yvette and Rose. Yes, so many, so many need prayer. And I'm glad that not only my cup runs over, but your cup runs over too. Aren't you glad this morning that he doesn't just give us a little pint full? Yeah. He fixes it so that we are in overflow, that we have abundance, that we have enough to share with somebody else. So even when you are at your wit's end, oh, there's my brother Julian Clark. I'm so glad you're here. He, Julian is a wonderful, wonderful, powerful man of God. He said, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassion fails not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Lamentations 3, 22 through 23. Thank you so much, my brother. Thank you for that, Julian. You all make sure you go back and read that scripture. Lamentations 3, 22 through 23. Great is his faithfulness. Sophia says, thank you. I will be praying for her. And thank you for thinking about my dad. I will text you on the updates. Please do. Jennifer A. Ketchens just chimed in. She says, so much going on. Prayers for all of us. Yes, indeed. That's why I'm so glad that our cup is able to run over. We have enough, Jennifer, to share with somebody else. I know, I know there are days when you feel like that you're at your wit's end. But because his mercies are new every morning. And because great is his faithfulness, you can add a little more to your plate. Oh, yes, you can. Oh, yes, you can. Because you are overflowing with his goodness, his grace, and his mercy. Not only that, not only are you overflowing, and not only does your cup run over, yea, you walk through the valley of the shadow of darkness. Now it almost seems strange that that scripture or, or those words rather would follow you know your cup running over. But he goes from that. He goes from my cup runneth over and talking about being led and being blessed and the path of righteousness to yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I, I never fully quite understood that. But I was reading about shepherd boys who lived and, and, and had herds in the wilderness. I did not realize that convicts in David's day, men who were on the run, hid in the wilderness. And they were hunted, but they were hiding. 
But if they could find the shepherd's tent, the shepherd would take them in and feed them. And all of a sudden, uh, though they walk through the valley of the shadow of death, if they could find a shepherd in the wilderness, though they were guilty, if you could find a shepherd in the wilderness, it would help you and save you. How many of you, have, have you ever felt like you were in the wilderness? Yeah. Something going on in your life, things just not meshing right, and you needed a shepherd? God is saying in your worst times, in your bad times, in the times where it is excruciating and it hurts the most. Yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he's saying, I'll still be there. I'll still be there. I'll cause your cup to run over. And I'll be with you in your moments of wilderness. I'll be there. His rod and his staff, they comfort you. It's going to be okay. It is going to be okay. All is well. Tiffany Tonsil is here. So glad to have you, Tiffany. Tiffany says, yes, thank you, Lord, for the overflow. Um, thank you, Father, for being faithful. Dana Christie Brooks says, good morning, Sister Joy and my beautiful sisters. Have a terrific transformational Tuesday. Have a blessed day. And same to you. Uh, Tammy Everett says, Amen. Marilyn Wardlaw is here. She says, Good morning. Tammy says, Amen. Amen again. Tiffany Thompson says, My Lord, a shepherd in the wilderness. Yes, indeed. And a shepherd looks out for his sheep. Not only that, not only that, Tiffany, not only uh, is he with you as you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, not only does his rod and his staff comfort you, he prepares a table. Uh-oh, somebody needs to hear this. He prepares a table before you, not just anywhere. He prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemies. There ain't no meal like the meal you will eat in the presence of your enemies. Somebody needs to hear that. Giovanna says, mercy. Tammy is clapping. Yeah. He said, don't you worry. Don't you try to get revenge. All those people who call themselves not liking you, not speaking to you, recruiting other people to mistreat you and mishandle you, those people who are ignoring you, who acting like you don't exist, the Lord is saying, I will prepare a table. Yeah. So I don't want you wishing that your enemies would go away. I want them there to see what I'm going to do for you. Oh, he's a wonderful God. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. I know some of you, some of you today, you feel like you feel like you're being discounted. Yeah. You feel like folk are overlooking you. And sometimes they are overlooking you. Don't get me wrong now. <laughs> Sometimes people will overlook you on purpose. They will dismiss you on purpose. Because why? They misunderstand you. Yeah. The, first of all, they can't handle your anointing. Yeah. They think that you think that it's you. But you've already humbled yourself under the almighty hands of God and you know that God gave you the gifts, God gave you the talent, God gave you the resources you know you didn't do it by yourself and you're constantly giving God praise and thanks but you're going to always have some folk that are going to look at things the wrong way do me a favor take your mouth off of them take your mouth off of them don't say anything about them. God has you in the palm of his hands. Oh, yes, he does. He said, I will prepare. Not you, not your friend, not your mama, not your daddy, not your, not your baby daddy, not your husband, not your boo. I don't need them stepping in. God said, I can do this all by myself. I will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Your enemies have got to be there. They got to be there. 
Let them say and do whatever they want. Take your mouth and your hands off of them. I got it. Now y'all felt that part of the message because all y'all were chiming in on that one. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Tammy says, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Quinta Brown says, my Lord, my Lord. Giovanna says, help us, Lord. Missy says, Jesus, yes, I needed to hear this. Tiffany Tonsil says, glory. Marjorie Malone says, hallelujah, amen. Danny Krista Brooks says, yes. Tammy says, uh, thank you, Jesus. Yes, y'all are thanking him this morning. Tammy Everett says, have your way, Holy Spirit. Oh, y'all got so many comments and my time is out. Tammy says, yes, yes, amen. Dana Christy Brooks says, say it again, Sister Joey. Missy Brown says, yes, let them talk. That will stop nothing. Um, Missy Brown says, yes, Lord, I let it go. Giovanna says, God's got this. Get out of the way. Tiffany Thompson says, the enemy's got to be there. They got to be there. Ethel Brown says, keep my main focus on God. You better. Quinn uh, McCaleb says, Tammy Every, good morning. Yes, he'll prepare a table. Not only that, but he anoints your head with oil. Honey, you are anointed. You better let folk talk. Let them say what they want to say. Let them do what they want to do. Let them go where they want to go. You are anointed. He said in his word, he anoints your head with oil. And here's my favorite part. And y'all, I got to get out of here after this. Here is my favorite part. Surely. <laughs> do you know what surely means? Surely, surely what? Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. That is what I'm waiting for. Honey, you don't have to put me on who's who. My name don't have to be in lights. My name doesn't have to be on a marquee. You can ignore me. You can discount me. I'm not looking for the praises of men. I'm looking for the end. I'm looking for surely. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. That's what I'm looking for. I don't need a crowd. I don't need an entourage. I don't need a best friend. I need a Shirley. How many of you need a Shirley? If you need a Shirley, would you type in Shirley? In the comment bar, type in Shirley. Let me know that you need a Shirley too. Yes, indeed, Shirley. Tammy says that's right. Sakina Price says good morning Sakina so glad to have you I've never seen you here before sweetheart if this is your first time please don't let it be your last time we're so glad you're here somebody somebody thanks Sakina for being here this morning Tiffany Tossel says surely Sakina says amen Tammy is raising her hands Javonna says say that uh, Marjorie Malone says surely Tammy Everett says that's right amen Ethel says uh, surely Mar um, Marilyn Wartlaw says uh, amen surely goodness and mercy Amnita says surely Javonna says surely Dana says surely Marjorie says say it says Sakina says surely Missy Brown says surely Sophia says Says Shirley Tammy Everett says Shirley Quinna says it uh, say it say it Shirley uh, Tiffany says Shirley Missy Brown says Shirley she's laughing LP Gardner my middle school classmate says Shirley good morning Javonna uh, is welcoming um, she's welcoming Sakina Ethel says so glad Anita Mark says Sakina welcome let me tell you something <laughs> people get it all mixed up but you and I don't get it mixed up we don't get it mixed up at all. And I hope you hear the words that are coming out of my mouth. I don't have to have a Rolls Royce or a Bentley. <laughs> I don't have to live in a three-story mansion in a gated community. Yeah. I, I, I don't have to have red bottoms. As long as I have shoes, I'm good. My bag doesn't have to say Prada. Yeah. I can shop at the thrift store and be just as happy. Honey, I may have lost my car, lost my house, lost my friends, lost my money, lost opportunities. But as long as I don't lose my mind, and at the end of the day, if I get a surely, surely grace and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I don't want everything. I don't want all of my pie in the sky when I die. I want some good things to happen here, and that's good news. Surely. Surely grace and mercy Every morning I wake up Grace and mercy is following me Surely Surely Quinn says my my surely 
Mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Surely, I got to get out of here, y'all. I got places to go, people to see, and things to do. But I'm telling you, you got me shouting in my spirit. Because you gave Jesus a surely this morning. You told him, Lord, even when the bottom falls out, even when my marriage is in trouble, even if my children have gone astray, even if I've had to bury a parent, even if the folks are acting crazy on the job, Lord, if you just give me a surely, surely, grace and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. That's all I want, Lord. That's all I want. We had some new people on here today. If this is your first time, I'm telling you, please don't let it be your last time. Come back again. Tammy says, surely. Marjorie says, my Lord. Missy says, I like that, Joey. I don't want all of my pie in the sky. Jennifer says, welcome, newbies. You're amongst great company. Thank you all for being here. Thank you all for being here. If nobody has told you this morning that they love you, let me tell you, I love you. Yes, I do. I love you. And there ain't a thing you can do about it. Go let somebody know this morning. Share this message with somebody. Chris says, Joey, thank you for breaking down Psalms 23. We needed to hear that. You're going to meet somebody this morning who doesn't understand surely. They are worried because they don't have this or that. They lost a house, lost a car, lost a child, almost lost their mind. They're about to give up. But I want you to remind them that surely, surely grace and mercy shall follow them all the days of their life. I look forward to meeting you back here tomorrow on a wonderful Wisdom Wednesday. I love you again and there ain't a thing you can do about it. Go help somebody find their surely.